Now I could go further and say, all right, let me, you know, assuming that I have some more hardware present, right? Can I do something called self-timed execution? I, do, I don't worry about, you know, uh, when a particular node, uh, 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 in other words, as and when a node becomes ready to execute, let it go ahead and execute, right? And what I would end up with is something like this. I have assumed that I have two hardware for A. Okay, which is why I can do A0 and A1. I start them off immediately. Both are ready to execute. What happens after A0 completes? Now I can run B0, right? Now A0 and A1 both complete at the same time, right? which means that I could also have run both together uh, uh, sorry, uh, so A0 and A1, are, in other words, after A0 and A1 have completed, what will happen is these two delay elements will go away from the CA edge and I'll have two delay elements sitting on the AB edge. Okay. But B depends not just on A, it also depends on C. So if I look at it from that point of view, only B0 is now present, uh, is now ready to execute. Okay. And what happens when B0 is ready to execute? I go ahead and execute B0. After a certain amount of time, that is 20 time units, B0 completes and now I can execute C0. After C0 executes, now I will end up with 2D over here after C0. My mistake, it won't be 2D, it will be once again uh, another delay element or another token will appear on that CB edge after C0 has executed. Right? because the original B0 would have consumed this token that is present on the CPH and also one of the tokens that's present on the ABH. Okay, So after C0, in other words, B1 is now ready to execute, which is what I have shown over here in terms of the dependencies. After B1, B1 then C1 is ready to execute. And interestingly, after C0 is executed, A2 is also ready to execute because now I suddenly have a token so after C0, there will be one token present over here as well, which is enough for A2, the next iteration of A to proceed. Okay. Now, look at this pattern. The way that I drew it was I initially was very greedy, right? I mean, everything, whatever was ready to start with, I just went ahead and executed it immediately. So the A0, A1 start off together. But what you will notice is that after a while, it falls into a regular repeating pattern. And that repeating pattern is actually interesting. It's sort of, if you look at the A's, there is overlap between, you know, A2 and A3, A4 and A5 and so on, right? The B's also have some kind of a slight, there is a periodicity, but it's not exactly, you know, uh, periodic item to item, right? There is sort of a group periodicity over there, right? If you look closely at it in the steady state, what it ends up with is it looks something like this, right? The A2, A3, A4, A5, those executions. And the interesting thing that we end up with over here is that effectively speaking, I now need to look at if I want to find out something like, you know, what is the time required for a iteration to complete? There are multiple different ways of looking at this. One given iteration, that is to say, let's say A2, it right, actually takes the same amount of time, 40 plus 20 plus 10, right? But the periodicity is at this level. This is the periodic pattern. Right? And the periodic pattern is such that I can actually repeat after this interval, what I've shown with the blue line. Right? And that interval is called the initiation interval in this case. And over here, what we can see is that that number is equal to 70, but for two iterations. So effectively, in other words, I'm able to run two iterations of this entire data flow graph every 70 time units. Effectively, in other words, average iteration interval can be said to be 70 by 2 equal to 35. Okay. And what we will see as we move forward is that this 35 is actually, I mean, it's interesting. It is actually a lower bound, a constant, right? That you can prove in this uh, situation. 
So the first question, of course, is how can two instances of A run in parallel? Because there are two initial tokens present on the CE to A edge, A2 happens to depend on C0, right? Which is what we have seen in this graph over here, right? The A2 just depends on C0, right? But A0 and A1 don't, they don't depend on C0. So A0 and A1 can both execute. B0 depends on A0, right? That is part of the critical path that we have shown over there. B1 depends on C0, but B0 does not, right? So in other words, I have just basically put down a list of some of the dependencies that do exist and which don't, right? So effectively what we can see over here is, I have drawn a situation where if I look at the critical path of the graph, that still goes through A to B to C, which is 40 plus 20 plus 10 is equal to 70 time units, right? But the average initiation interval is equal to 70 by 2, it's equal to 35. Okay. So of course, what I showed you, there was the initiation interval in order to start two iterations. What you could effectively say is that the average iteration interval in that case comes out to be 35 because on average I would be able to generate one completed iteration, whatever is output corresponding to one completed iteration every 35 time units. The latency on the other hand is 70 because this is the time required to finish one iteration and you know it's just basically the, would be related to the critical path. Even if I had more hardware, what would end up happening is because the critical path is such and such a number, I would end up taking this much time to finish it. 